Greetings, everyone. Mad Mike here once again with another installment of 32 Manias with Mike. Uh, here we are. Uh, we are talking about WrestleMania 4. Uh, this was the first WrestleMania to emanate from Trump Tower, the Trump Casino, excuse me, the Trump Casino in Atlantic City. And, um, uh, you know, I, I'm going to make a slight joke here. It's kind of funny that big celebrities didn't show up for this one. Uh, we had Alice Cooper at WrestleMania 3. We had Ray Charles. We had Aretha Franklin at WrestleMania 3. WrestleMania 4, no offense to her, but Gladys Knight did America the Beautiful. You know, not, I mean, do you know who Gladys Knight is without Wikipediaing it? I didn't think so. Anyway, um, Let's get let's get to the the card because holy shit there were 16 matches on this show guys. Now, you're probably asking yourself why were there 16 matches? I'm going to tell you. Um this was the first time the WWF Championship had ever been vacated. There was a rematch from WrestleMania 3 between Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and it turned out that the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, wanted the title so badly, he paid a fake referee to fast count um, fast count the match to give Andre the championship. Andre, as soon as he got the championship, he went to give it to Ted DiBiase. And the president, Jack Tunney, said, oh, no, that's not happening. So they declared the title vacant, and we got... A huge ass tournament at WrestleMania for the vacated WWF Championship. Um, now I'm gonna be honest with you, it's a long tournament. Um, there are a lot of people in here that I don't think ever had a chance at winning the belt, but you know, we'll get to that. Um, so and by vert, one thing I did appreciate with this is uh, WWE did something. They don't often do. Um, they subverted expectations on this. Because you'd think that, you know, after WrestleMania 3, the the finals are just going to be Hogan and Andre again. Or even Hogan and Ted DiBiase, right? Because Ted DiBiase was the one who caused all this. But uh, that's not exactly where we went, because guess what? Uh, Hogan and Andre each got a first round buy in the tournament because they're involved in the title match to begin with. And then in the second round, they had to fight each other. They had to fight each other. It was awesome. Getting it out of the way. It, it was really, really good. But that's not where we start. Let, let's let's begin at the beginning. Um, we opened the, the whole show up with a big-ass battle royal. Uh, battle royal which nowadays probably would have been on the pre-show. Uh, and Andre the Giant is not in this Battle Royal, so you didn't know who was going to win. Uh, the winner of this Battle Royal got a huge trophy. Had to be seven feet tall. Had to be. Um, and the last three guys in there were Bad News Brown, Brett the Hitman Hart, and the Junkyard Dog. Kind of interesting because the two heels teamed up against JYD and actually eliminated him. So you had two heels fighting it out for the end, which, again, subverting expectations, something they don't often do. And Bad News Brown won because he turned on Bret Hart. Then Bret Hart, um, being hashtag bitter Bret, as he's wont to do, broke the trophy. Uh, the, the big rumor about this is that they actually broke the trophy when they were bringing it to Trump Tower, so they had to fix it. But apparently they fixed it too well where Brett couldn't break the trophy upon throwing it down after the match. You watch. Brett throws down the trophy expecting it to splinter in half, and it doesn't. And he just gets pissed off and starts stomping the shit out of it. All right, so let's move on to the first round. Um, the first round, we had a bunch of matches. Uh, we had Ted DiBiase going up against Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, Ted DiBiase wins pretty easily uh hacksaw basically ted dibiase cheats his whole way through this tournament andre giants there for every match that he has um yeah so ted dibiase by the way sporting lovely patrick duffy looking hair 
look up Ted DiBiase, look at Patrick Duffy. You'll see what I mean. Uh, the next match, we had Don Morocco, The Rock, beating Dino Bravo. Uh, it was a quick match. You know, most of these have to be quick matches because even though the pay per view is three hours long, or three and a half hours long, excuse me. Um, you know, it's still it's still a big tournament. You have to get you have to get there. Um, then we had Greg the Hammer Valentine defeating Ricky Steamboat. Probably, I'd say, I'll say the second best match of the tournament. I'll get to the I'll get to my favorite match of the tournament in a little bit. But Greg Valentine, Ricky Steamboat. Uh, I don't think they wrestled each other that much, but damn, they worked really well together. It was a lot of fun. I would definitely watch it. Valentine cheated a little bit to win. Uh, this also was the WrestleMania where Ricky Steamboat brought out his son. I'm sure he probably does that again at some point, too. Uh, but then we get to the Macho Man Randy Savage with Miss Elizabeth going up against the natural Butch Reed. And uh, Macho Man beats him pretty quickly, I think. Uh, he, he beats him with the elbow drop. And, uh, yeah, so now we get into some some weird finishes. Some weird finishes. We're, we're going to get into this. The one-man gang um, beat Bam Bam Bigelow by count out. Yeah. Uh, the match didn't even go three minutes. I I don't know if it's because both... I mean, because Bam Bam Bigelow, I forgot he wrestled this early in WWF. I knew he was, I knew he was a bit seasoned when he came to ECW. Uh, but oh, man, Bam Bam Bigelow, just watch the find out this find this match, just to watch how quick Bigelow was. He was he was moving around real real quick. Like he kind of reminded me of Cage a little bit from Lucha Underground. Just very very quick movements, to, doing high cross body stuff like that. And he's a big boy. It was really really fun to watch that, uh, even though the match didn't last that long. Um, then we got my favorite match of the first round, personally. Ravishing Rick Rude, Jake the Snake Roberts. Holy shit. I mean, right there, you can tell it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, the only thing that sucked is Ravishing Rick Rude, a lot of momentum. Jake Roberts, huge fan favorite. Neither guy can really lose, so the match goes to a time limit draw. It's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Um, it also means the one-man gang gets a buy. Yeah. So uh, that is the second buy. In the, actually, technically third, because Hogan and Andre both got first-round buys. So this is the third buy in the tournament so far. There might be another one later. There will be. Um, so after the first round, we had to break it up a little bit and we got to a match between the ultimate warrior and Hercules. Uh, this is, this is kind of proto ultimate warrior. He's not hugely popular yet. He's still wearing a weird bandana for some reason. Haven't figured that out. Um, but apparently this is just about like a show of strength between the two guys. Um, ultimate warrior snapped the chain of Hercules at some point. Uh, not on the pay-per-view, but before this. They they didn't have a lot of time for video packages on this show. Just a forewarning because there's a lot of show to get to. Uh, but Warrior beat Hercules, you know, as you would expect. As you would expect. Bobby Heenan doesn't doesn't fare so well <laughs> on pay-per-view. Um, or does he? We'll find out. But uh, then we get to the second round, the match everyone has been waiting for, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. This is basically where they show the whole video package, why we have this tournament to begin with. And now, this is controversial. Okay? Um, the match ends in a double disqualification. But... Uh, it ends in a double disqualification because both guys use the chair on each other. All right. Now they don't do this at the same time. Hulk Hogan hits Andre first because of outside interference. So technically, I think if you were refereeing this now, Hulk Hogan would have been disqualified and Andre Giant would have moved on. 
Now, I understand why they don't do that, and actually, Andre Giant explains it later, um, which is great. It's it's really fun. Uh, Andre Giant does a promo later. One of the most famous backstage promos of all time in WrestleMania history. He does it with Bob Uecker. Um Andre said that the whole plan was to get Hogan kicked out of the tournament. That was the master plan because he wants Ted DiBiase to win the belt. And it's actually kind of brilliant. It's kind of brilliant. It makes me forgive the double DQ because I completely forgot the context of Andre's interview with uh, Bob Uecker. In fact, I thought it happened before the match. But Andre explains their whole master plan. They just wanted Hogan out of the tournament. And then Andre begins to choke Bob Uecker. Which, I'm sure, that's the image everyone remembers from this mania. Besides, obviously, the finish. Um, then we go to Ted DiBiase against The Rock, Don Morocco. Um, again, another match where DiBiase kind of cheats a little bit and beats Don Morocco. And then we get another really good match, even if it was a little bit short. Macho Man Randy Savage and Greg the Hammer Valentine. Uh now, Savage has been worked over a lot. Valentine's been worked over a lot. They both had matches before. And as Valentine goes for his figure four, Macho Man rolls him up, small package, and Savage gets the win. So Savage has to go against the one-man gang, while Ted DiBiase gets a bye to the finals because of the Hogan-Andre situation. So there are four byes in this tournament, which, you know, I guess is fine, but you also could just cut the tournament down by four guys and, you know, done something with that. Um, but before I get to the, uh, to kind of the, the break in between the tournament, I have to talk about Bob Uecker for a second because Bob Uecker spends this entire pay-per-view. I'm pretty sure he's trying to fuck Vanna White. I don't, I, I didn't think I'd ever say those words in my life before, but yeah, Bob Uecker is, Every time he's either on commentary, doing a backstage interview, he's like, where's Vanna? Where's Vanna? He's trying to bang Vanna White. I mean, he doesn't succeed. He gets a kiss in the introduction in the main event. But that's basically, it's really, it's kind of disturbing. It's a little disturbing. Anyway, back to the matches. Um, We get an Eric Connell championship match uh, with the Honky Tonk Man. Uh, I won't do that again. I probably will. Uh, but Honky Tonk Man, and this is fun. I had to do a little research on this because I didn't remember who this was. Honky Tonk Man came out with Jimmy Hart, which is natural, but also came out with Peggy Sue. Uh, now, those of you who don't know Peggy Sue, uh, she was a female valet that came out with Honky Tonk Man based on like Elvis song, stuff like that. Now, if you look at Peggy Sue, she looks really familiar, despite the fact that she's has blonde hair. And sure enough, it's actually Sensational Sherry. And Sensational Sherry, as Peggy Sue, is amazing. Like, I kind of wish that was brought up when she got inducted to the Hall of Fame. Because Sensational Sherry is low-key one of the greatest performers in the WWF in the 80s. Bar none, hands down, Sensational Sherry is amazing. Sensational Sherry was a huge part of the first pay-per-view I ever saw, Summer, Summer, Summer 89. Kind of, kind of the reason I got into wrestling. 